So welcome to our first preliminary match of this evening. This is our free live stream on YouTube here for Polaris Ford. Do join us for the pay-per-view later, 6.30 p.m. British Standard Time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Reese Asasimba in the navy gi wearing the orange belt. He's representing Fight Zone London. He's taking on Dylan O'Brien in the white gi representing Bristol Dojo BJJ. And don't blink, guys. There it is. The flying oh, attack, oh. flying triangle. I'm just about to see. Say that Reese has got some absolutely superb flying skills. He recently won with a flying armbar. This time he's opted for the triangle approach. Yeah, he jumped straight up into that crooked guard. He's trying to work that arm across the body. Armbar options for him as well here, Tom. Oh, there we go. We said armbar possibility, and he finishes this fight quick. Let's go have a word with this young man. Wow, absolutely fantastic win by Reese. These guys had met previously your, once before. It was one apiece. Your Reece winner now takes by, it two to one. Here we go with Josh speak with the winner. Your winner by your toe toe. I'm here with our winner, Reese Assassin. But Reese, uh, was that the game plan? Because you finished that one incredibly fast. Yeah, it was all part of the game plan. Um, we knew he was going to try and be um, really defensive because he knows my guard pull. So we wanted to go for the fake guard ball. If that didn't work, we'd go for the fake guard ball takedown. I saw the flying triangle, so I got it. What is it about the flying attacks that you like so much? Because you, you win quite often with, with these type of attacks. Yeah, I like the flying triangle most because fly, uh, triangle just by itself is my favorite move. So I slightly modified it. So you put, it, put your hand down so you've got a base if you fall. But um, yeah, that's it. Well, great stuff. Congratulations on your win opening tonight's card. Ladies and gentlemen, Reese Asasimba! keeps me coming back to jiu-jitsu uh, for me it's it's the people the people is what keeps me coming back to jiu-jitsu uh, there's nothing like it anywhere you go in the world if you know jiu-jitsu you can find your, your place to stay you can make friends you can you know be shown around it's amazing I keep coming back to jiu-jitsu because it's a fun way to challenge my mind and body one day I could come in be really loose and relaxed. Other days I could come in and just work as hard as I possibly can. You come in for two hours out of the day and shut out everything else, all the nonsense and all the business and all the crap that you deal at work. You don't have to think about it when you're in jujitsu. It's a way that you can just take, sit back, breathe and become a badass at the same time. I keep coming back to jujitsu because of the opportunity to challenge myself. Every day, learning something new, Every day, the opportunity to fight through adversity in new ways and turn weaknesses into strengths. I want to see actually how good can I actually get this art. I met some people that are absolutely incredible, and I want to see how close can I actually get to that. How good can I actually get? I'm thirsty, I'm starving, lots of things hurt, uh, but uh, I can't wait to do it again. And the reason I keep coming back to jiu-jitsu is because I can't not.
Moving on swiftly to our second fight of the evening, Yanis Rieskins is going to be from Carson Gracie Essex is going to be taking on Miha Perkovic of East Coast BJJ Island. This is going to be a cracking fight. Ladies and gentlemen of Polaris, your next fighter is from the United Kingdom. Fighting out of Carlson Gracie Essex. Make some noise for Janice Rickstein. His opponent comes from Ireland, fighting out of East Coast BJJ Ireland. Make some noise for me, her havoc. So your referee for this one is going to be Nick Brooks. Yanis Rootskins in the all-black Miha Perhovic in the green and white. Ten minutes on the clock. Go. Slap of hands and we are underway. Early guard pull from Rootskins. Very willingly stepping into the leg exchanges. Looking to sit back on the ankle early is Perhovic. Can't quite see the hip control but broken out easily from Rootskins. Perkovic actually holds an 11 and 1 amateur record with 10 first round submission victories so this could be over quickly lads. He has jumped on this knee bar, barely saw the entry. Well Rieskins is not going to give up easily but uh, he is deep in this, don't think he can clear the knee line easily and he hasn't got his, his other leg to kick on the butt to, to free, both legs tied up here. I think he's out of the worst of it. He is going to look to transition. Oh, it's still on deep. It's a bit low down the leg, perhaps. Stone cold uh, expression on the face of, of Yanis as he looks to go belly down and free himself. And he sits back on a leg now. This is what Pilar's is all about. Yeah, early scrambles and early leg attacks. All submissions legal here as Rootskin's looking for the heel hook. Miha briefly attempted the toe hold there, but let it go. Can't quite see the entanglement that Yanis has from our angle here in the commentary booth. It looks as though the knee line's starting to come out. He's searching for that toe hold again. I mean, Tom, how important is it to cinch these up nice and early whilst they're, they're not slippery? There hasn't much been much time elapsed. So very calm and composed. Perhovic again looking to come and spin on top. Rieskins refusing to let go of that foot. I think they were just earning each other's respect there. Neither man showing they were scared of the leg lock battle. Rieskins butt scooting, trying to make sure he maintains the distance he wants to his opponent. Doesn't want Perhovic to shut him down too easily. Into a half guard here. Interesting, he's gone with the, the foot on the hip to create the frame rather than the knee shield. Got to be careful of the esteemer lock, perhaps. He's leaving that left foot in a, a dangerous position across that hip. Now looking for the Baron Bolo. Again, Perhovic going to the feet. Do join in on social media tonight, hashtag Polaris4. Let us know what you think of all of tonight's action. Of course, make sure you join us for our pay-per-view offering, 6.30 p.m. British Standard Time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Eight fantastic 15-minute fights coming up later. Reeskins passing up the opportunity to come up in top position there, opting again to try and drag this leg through into more of a control position. How vital, guys, is that first line of defense when someone grabs hold of your leg to really start 
start the turn, start the escape uh, as early as possible. Reetskin's going face down, trying to split the legs, drag that knee free. Looks as though he's out once again. And it's interesting to me that he's continuing to maintain this seated guard position. Yeah, well, you have to see Yanis on top. He's obviously comfortable so far. He believes in what he's, good, what he's up to, his strategy. And both these guys doing a, a lot of good work on the domestic jiu-jitsu scenes here in the UK. Yanis frequently traveling out to, to train with Clark Gracie out in uh, the United States. Picked up a lot of good Omer Plata tips from him, I'm sure. Looking for the inverted heel hook here is Miha. Yeah, this 50-50 position is so much more dangerous when the heel hooks are in, in play. Really got to be hiding and protecting your feet. And you can see there, Miha's got his legs triangled, protecting his ankles. And Yanis really is the one who's... Well, you can see he's double gripping on that wrist, trying to stop any attacking grip from his opponent. You can see Miha keeping that left arm posted away, trying to stop Yanis securing the grip and figure fouring his legs. There's a few interesting options from here. Testament to how enthralled the crowd are that we can actually hear the athletes breathing. <laughs> yes, we can. Oh. Matt side Mike's picking up everything here in the Lighthouse Center in pool. Well, guys, once you get in this position, Miha bridging into this one. Good grip on the inside heel hook. Yanis grimacing a little bit. He's really trying to break this grip with both hands. Oh, and he has to concede the 50-50 position. Well, it was all about the leg locks all night there. And Miha Perhovic from East Coast PJJ taking home the win. Good fight, guys. Good fight, man. Your winner by Hill Hook, Miha Perhavec. Good job. I'm here with our winner, Miha. Miha, talk us through the, the finish of that fight. It seemed like the entire match you were both hunting for those leg locks. Yeah, I, I like leg locks and I like guys who are willing to prove that we in Europe also have some leg locks. You don't have to be in a particular gym. You can learn them by yourself. Thank you to Yanis for taking the match. Thank you to everyone who set it up, everyone who supported me. At the next Polaris, I would like to fight the winner of Ben Dyson. And uh, who's he fighting in? Tom Brie. Tom Brie. Sorry about that. I just fought. My memory isn't really good. Or I'll take the loser as well if they won't give me the winner. But I want to fight here again and be better and prove it. What, what? What's it been like for you coming over from, from your, your home in Ireland and, uh, and getting to showcase your skills here in the opening to, to such a big event like Polaris 4? So first of all, I've only been in Ireland for a year. I'm from Slovenia. Shout out to everyone there. And it's been an absolute pleasure. This, is, this has been my dream for a long time. I haven't found as much success as I wanted to in points jiu-jitsu so far. I'm definitely still working on it, but I think this is the format where I can excel. Great stuff. Congratulations, Thanks. ladies and gentlemen. Your winner, Miha Pahavec.
your favorite titles are now all in one place. Go to jujitsu.com, create an account, then download the free Jujitsu app. Access your Jujitsu library anywhere. Download the free Jujitsu app today. Can you hear me? So, our next bout this evening, UFC veteran Phil Harris, representing Jim One, is going to take on fellow mixed martial artist Spencer Hewitt. Ladies and gentlemen of Polaris, your next Polaris fight. This fighter is from the United Kingdom, fighting out of Jim One. Make some noise for Phil Harris! His opponent, also hailing from the United Kingdom, fighting out of Dark Star, fighting out of Origin Health and Fitness, Spencer Hewitt. Your referee for this one, Oli Geddes beckons these two mixed martial artists to the center of the mat. Phil Billy Harris in the purple trunks with no top, taking on Spencer Hewitt in the uh, Joker rash guard. Yeah, Billy. Phil Harris, UFC veteran versus Spencer Hewitt, who had his last MMA fight with Bellator. Yeah, I mean, Phil, Phil's been around the game a very long time. I think he's had over 30 pro MMA fights, the national uh, judo background before that. So. You know, Spencer Hewitt clearly not wanting to wrestle, not wanting to take a chance on the feet and sitting to guard early here. Oh, Phil immediately looking for the heel look. You've got to the Ashigarami. Hewitt tries to roll and split the legs. And a very quick tap. Well, wow. early finish here at Polaris 4. Oh, and I'm going to go have a word with him, but I'm not entirely sure what he's going to say about that one. Heel hook. Heel hook, yeah. Not entirely sure what to ask you after that one, Phil. That was a, that was very quick work. Uh, game plan straight off. You, you looked like you grabbed the leg, and that's all you wanted. Uh, I, I would feel out. I didn't know how he's going to do it. I thought he might have wanted to wrestle a bit, be an MMA fighter, but decided to sit down, which is probably a wise choice. But just got the leg straight away. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, Phil's got quite an extensive judo background as well. Um, Phil, you've competed at the highest levels of, of mixed martial arts a lot of time in the UFC. Um, you know, what's it like transitioning to doing these grappling super fights now? Yeah, um, this is w where I want to stay now. I want to push hard. I wanted this fight. I wanted to get the submission and get onto that main card for a big fight. Maybe someone from, the, from America or Japan or someone. I want to get on the big fights now. We'll see what we can do for you. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Phil Billy Harris. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two.
Jiu-Jitsu is this awesome thing that you could add to your life. It's a style of self-defense. You could compete. You could set goals for yourself inside the gym. You could lose weight, get in better shape. Um, all while well, learning this, this style of martial art and meeting some really cool people. And, you know, just, just go try it out and see how it improves your life. Jiu-Jitsu for me is a martial art uh, based on self-defense. If you go a little further into it, you start the sport aspect. Uh, as an athlete, it pushes you, keeps you in shape, keeps your mind right, uh, helps you focus on one certain thing. And that's spread throughout your entire life off of the map. Jiu-Jitsu to me, it's play, life and death, ego reduction, strategy, skillful movements, creativity, artistry. Really, Jiu-Jitsu, as always, it's a uh, martial art, okay? Gives uh, everyone a sense of purpose, a sense of community, just to train hard and, and get life lessons out of it. So, I mean, that's, that's what Jiu-Jitsu is to me, so. For me, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is everything. It's a chance and an opportunity to become a better person, both physically and mentally. It can be hard work, but it's also a lot of fun and I'm definitely not afraid of hard work. And who doesn't like to have fun? It's kind of like playing cowboys and Indians in the front yard with my friends. It's a lot more. And uh, moving on to our fourth match of the evening, Paul Bridges from Dark Star Jiu Jitsu is going to take on Jeff Lawson from the Ippon Gym. Ladies and gentlemen of Polaris, your next fight of the evening. Fighting out of Dark Star Jiu Jitsu. Make some noise for Paul Bridges! His opponent, fighting right from here in Bournemouth, from Epon Jim. Please welcome Jeff Lawson. Crowd coming alive for this one. Nick Brooks is our referee. Jeff Lawson from the Ippon Gym, literally two miles down the road from here, taking on Paul Bridges from Dark Star Jiu Jitsu. Paul in the blue gi, Jeff Lawson in the white gi. Yep, they call him Judo Jeff Lawson for a reason. <laughs> He's a little ninja. Hopefully, he will treat us to some fireworks tonight. Oh, I mean, he, you know, MMA or grappling throws straight into armbar transitions. He's Made a bit of a name for himself on the UK scene, pulling those off. He was carrying his daughter on his back in the pink gi, which I believe was the gi he first started his uh, career in earlier in when he was a boy. Now Lawson showing his intention to want to keep this standing and execute one of those takedowns or throws to achieve a dominant position, stuffing the early attempted takedown of Paul Bridges. That is what it's all about. Well, did we not say throws into armbars? He was not able to show his best last time at Polaris, but today he has stolen the show so far. That was unbelievable. Highlight stuff. Excellent. If on seeing Aggie into Here's the replay. Spinning armbar. Ridges could not tap quick enough. That was tight. You're winning by the way of armbar, Jeff Lawson! Hi guys, um, yeah, to my son and my wife at home, I'm, I'm sorry, 
I trained real hard. Man, that was so quick. I hit the floor and he spun for the arm. I give complete respect to this guy. Um, I know I, I took it for two weeks' notice. That's no excuse. Man, that was awesome technique and it caught me having. Um, I just want to say... Um, we, Rich, Rich. Um, we, 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 we did this fight and we're wearing these T-shirts um, for my really... Um, one of my best friends, um, Rich, and we did it in honour of um, his son, Huey. Um, that's why we're wearing these T-shirts. And I just want to say that... Win, 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 lose or draw, um, what, what, Rich has, what Rich has taught me is, man, you've got, you, you just got to live your dreams. And even if that, I got submitted super... I've never been submitted that fast ever, super quick. Um, but if that's any kind of inspiration for anyone, uh, p please take it. And if you can give to um, the Huey Pregel Fund on... On go 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 fund me. Really good calls for a play cart park for kids. This is what it is. Um, please, please do so. And congratulations to Jeff. That was super quick and awesome. Kind words from Paul Bridges there. <laughs> you got to follow that, Jeff. No sooner had we said we might see a huge throw into an armbar transition, and you treated us to a huge throw into an armbar transition. Um, so, you know, talk us through the finish, because it was single-minded once you put him on the ground and, and hunted for that arm. To be honest, that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't work in the first two or three minutes, that's it, that's all I've got. But um, I, really, I really can't follow that. Um, that's a tremendous thing that he's done, so... I can't, I can't follow that. You, you're, uh, you've got a, a fair few supporters here in the crowd tonight. <laughs> Obviously, you, your, your gym very close to here, Ippon Gym. Yeah. A few words for your guys watching. Uh, guys, I really, really appreciate the support. Um, we've got another one to do next with Ben, so let's have the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Jeff Ippon Lawson. Your favorite titles are now all in one place. Go to jujitsu.com, create an account, then download the free Jiu-Jitsu app. Access your Jiu-Jitsu library anywhere. Download the free Jiu-Jitsu app today. me coming back to jiu-jitsu uh, for me it's it's the people the people is what keeps me coming back to jiu-jitsu uh, there's nothing like it anywhere you go in the world if you know jiu-jitsu you can find your, your place to stay you can make friends you can you know be shown around it's amazing I keep coming back to jiu-jitsu because it's a fun way to challenge my mind and body one day I could come in be really loose and relaxed. Other days I could come in and just work as hard as I possibly can. You come in for two hours out of the day and shut out everything else, all the nonsense and all the business and all the crap that you deal at work. You don't have to think about it when you're in jiu-jitsu. It's a way that you can just take, sit back, breathe, and become a badass at the same time. I keep coming back to jiu-jitsu because of the opportunity to challenge myself. Every day, learning something new, Every day, the opportunity to fight through adversity in new ways and turn weaknesses into strengths. I want to see actually how good can I actually get at this art. I met some people that are absolutely incredible, and I want to see how close can I actually get to that. How good can I actually get? I'm thirsty, I'm starving, lots of things hurt, uh, but uh, I can't wait to do it again. And the reason I keep coming back to Jiu Jitsu is because 
I can't not. Final prelim match this evening, Marco Kanya from Fight Zone London is going to take on one of the UK's best up-and-coming black belts, Ross Nichols from Hodger Gracie Academy Gym Box. And for your final preliminary fight of the evening, ladies and gentlemen of Polaris, your next fighters from London, England, representing Fight Zone Checkmat, Marco Kanya! His opponent, also from London, England, fighting out of Hodger Gracie Academy gym box, make some noise for Ross Nichols! Our referee, Oli Geddes, brings the fighters to the center of the mat. Ross Nichols in the plain white gi. The red, white, and black gi for Marco Kenya. Both these guys very prevalent on the black belt domestic jiu-jitsu scene here in the UK. Ross Nichols very often known for pulling immediately into Z-Guard. You can see here he's got a sleeve and deep collar grip. Very comfortable in the seated position. Yes, Josh, we have ourselves a classic British matchup here between Checkmat and the Roger Gracie Academy. Well, Ross Nichols looking to elevate his opponent, goes back to both feet on the hips. Really good work to transition to the frame and a good stuff of the leg, looking for the X pass. There's Kanya. Yeah, Marco has some excellent passing skills. Very good at the Turiano pass, which he just showed. He's looking to go heavy on the upper body here now. Nichols using that overhook and sneaking that outside foot in. Kenya sitting down very heavy on Nichols' leg occasionally here. See, he's trying to control that far arm. What's the purpose of, of Kenya controlling that, that right arm of Nichols? It'll allow, um, it'll allow him to keep Ross flat um, and work his passing from there, either turning his hips on one side or the other. You can see immediately giving up the fight for that grip, and Nichols gets a tight pant grip on the left leg of Kenya. Marco's doing a great job of just kind of getting over the top of um, Ross's knees, which can make it hard for, for Ross to elevate or set up any sweep for. He's done a great job there. Yeah, nice butterfly guard sweep. Elevated and seems so effortless. Yeah, Ross did a great job of setting that up. Immediately the head coming in on the chin. We're going to turn the face. Posture nice and low. See so much set up off this traditional knee cut base now, don't we? That's where all the tricky guards and exchanges come in. Everybody getting very comfortable in this low one leg forward base. Nice reversal from Marco. Yeah, and straight into his passing game. Oh, good long step. And Nichols just about manages to follow him with the feet. So good steady start here. One exchange of position apiece. Nichols again goes to that overhook. Looking to feed that hook back inside. Oh, X guard now. Good transition. Excellent balance there by Kenya to stay on top. Yeah, Ross has gone straight back to that X guard again. So he's going to be looking to move those legs about, try and 
Constantly to the base, transitions to the knee bar, Very and this nice is deep. Bar. Looks like he realized the position was perhaps a little bit loose, gave it up. Kanya spins for the armbar. Well, he needed no time at all there to jump on that possible submission. Ross again looking for a, a leg entanglement here. Maybe we've seen the new rules come into effect, so he has to fight that uh, armbar back to win the, win the first portion of the fight. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, there is a, a judging panel going on here tonight. Dan Hardy, Mark Goddard and David Anuma are going to be scoring this one in the event that it goes the distance. They're going to be deciding who got the better of the fight in terms of things like progressing positions, submission attempts and dynamic escapes. So not just being content to let your opponent pass, constantly fighting to get back to, to an even keel. It's going to win you some points on the, uh, the scorecards. Now into the 50-50 uh, guard. It looks like Ross is trying to get his knee line down to the ground, but Marco's in a great job of stopping at the moment. Yeah, we've already seen one 50-50 exchange here tonight. Of course, that no-gi changes a fair bit when the, the cloth and the grips and the extra friction comes into play, but it looks as though Nichols has worked his way back out to his butterfly guard again. Yeah, it didn't seem like either guy wanted to be in the 50-50 position. Oh, Kanya with a gi grip around the back, gives it up. How common is it for somebody in Ross's position to be content using that overhook rather than attacking with an underhook? It's a little unusual. The underhook's going to give him a little bit of easier way to lift, but he seems to be doing a great job with it. So he's back to his variation of X-Guard. Very nice, almost onto the armor platter. Maybe he can transition it to the triangle. Yeah, he's got uh, the wrist on the wrong side of the hip at the moment, but uh, some possible transition options for him. Kanya's definitely going to have to be wary of what could happen. And Kanya giving the arm into the omoplata position. Well, this is very interesting. He's going to try and toe hold him over the top of his over the top of his neck. One-handed toe hold. There we go. He's putting on nicely, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get the tap at this level, guys. Mm, Nicholas yeah, doesn't. really doesn't look concerned. Oh. Ross with the Omoplata locked up. Can he flatten his opponent out? Can you maintaining just enough posture to keep that shoulder position strong? Trying to sneak that left knee on top of Ross's body. Yeah, Ross is doing a great job of stopping Marco's escape attempts. So we're just over halfway through this match. These prelim matches are, of course, 10 minutes long. 15 minutes for our full main card coming up at 6.30 p.m. British Standard Time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Do join us for that pay-per-view. You're, of course, watching the free live stream here on YouTube. Hashtag Polaris4 to get involved. And Ross again looking for a leg here. Fighting to try and put his man back down, but the posture of Nichols as he came back on top, put all his weight down on that trapped leg. He's maintained a good top position here. And as these ti this time ticks down, guys, we have to start considering what might the judges be looking at. They're breaking the fight down into three five-minute periods. And I've got to say, my intuition at the moment, oh, sorry, two five-minute periods, being as we're a 10-minute match. The, uh, my intuition at the moment would be that Nichols is perhaps having the more of the, the attempts, the more of the transition, certainly seems to be the one instigating the way forward here. Yeah, absolutely, I'm seeing it the same way. He's come closer on a couple of attempts, had the Amaplata and the leg attack. Still plenty of time remaining, a quarter of the bout. So a pause to retie the belts here. Hashtag Polaris4. Get involved on social media, Twitter and Instagram. Let us know what you think about tonight's bout. We can get hold of any of your tweets to interact during the broadcast. We certainly will do. My name's Josh Palmer, joined in the commentary booth by Tom Barlow and Nick Osipchak. And we're restarted. Nichols on top. Ross is setting up the crazy dog grips, looking to slide his knee through and uh, start a pass. So low to the ground, heavy pressure, head coming into play as well. 
He's in a very strong passing position now. I mean, he's, he's turned Kanye's hips so far down, but can he secure this position? Marco's done a great job of just going belly down and recovering and resetting the grip. So Nichols hugging the hips, looking to inch his way up the body. Can he secure a head and arm here? Trying to slide that right knee through to mount. Marco's got a tight pant grip, which is going to stop that. But oh, straight to the other platter again. Very nice. Well, what a transition from Nichols. Submission attempts, the highest rated thing on the judges' uh, docket here. And again, he's into the armor platter. Opposing side now, looking for the belt grip. Wasn't able to flatten Kanye out. And this could be a bad position for Marco. If Ross can catch that far shoulder. Nichols rolling all the way through. Crucifix with the Oma Plata here. Minute left. Looking for the wrist lock, perhaps, as well. And some double-jointed wrists, perhaps, for that Marco Kanya. I think Kanya's too proud to tap to the wrist lock. Yeah, that certainly looked a very tight submission. Nichols is going to try and come up on top here. And how contorted is the man from Fight Zone London in defending this submission? He's just gutting it out at this point. I love how methodical Nichols has been the whole way through. He hasn't really... You can just see some tension in his face now. He really wants that submission. Very close to finishing here. Marco is just gutting it out, trying to hold off. I don't really have any trepidation in saying that I think Ross Nichols is going to take a decision if it lasts another 20 seconds. But he's in on this cross choke with the Oma Platter as well. He will want the finish. And he's got the grip. Kenya's just tucking his, tucking his chin. And they're going to roll one more time. Good persistence from Nichols, but Kenya survives the time. And for the first time this evening, we're going to go to the judges' cards. It's an excellent fight. Both guys show great techniques. Get some good reversals, some great submission attempts from both guys. Yeah, and you know what, Tom, even though that went the distance, that was non-stop action. Here we go to the replay now. Early knee bar attempt. And to be honest, after the first quarter or so, it was all defences from Kanya. Nickel. Here was Nichols with the first on the plata. Kanya tried to counter with the toe hold. And this was right at the end. Couldn't quite get the finish. Winner by unanimous decision, Russ Nichols! I'm here with our winner, Ross Nichols. Ross, bit of London pride at stake in that one, perhaps? Yeah, our gyms are very close together, so... A little bit of competitiveness between both Marco and I. There was, uh, it seemed like as we were getting towards the last 30 seconds there, a bit of tension on the face, like you really, really wanted that submission. Are you disappointed that he managed to gut it out to the end? Yeah, I am a little bit. Um, of course, submission only event. I want to get the sub, don't want to go to the decision. But I'm happy with the performance overall. Uh, I can barely breathe now though, struggling with this. A lot of people, after our last couple of events, were petitioning to, to see you here. You've been around the, the domestic scene here in the UK a long time. What does it feel like to finally be here on Polaris and get to showcase your skills? Oh, great. Hopefully, they'll have me back. Hopefully, our fight was exciting enough for everybody to want to keep bringing both Marco and myself back to this tournament. I'd certainly like to see it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Ross Nichols.